Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video I'm going to be talking about all the books I'm planning to read in the month of March. Okay, so time to talk about reading in March. Uh, who is surprised that I have a lot of things that I'm reading for the many things that I keep committing to? Probably nobody. Like, this seems to be my MO, but I'm also genuinely really happy and excited about all the stuff that I'm doing. So let's go ahead and dive in and talk about all of those things. First up, this month for the Patreon book club, the genre was sci-fi, and the book that my patrons voted for us to read together is A Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe by Alex White. I am really looking forward to this. This was gifted to me actually from my friend Amanda, the naughty librarian who really loved this. It's like adventures in space with a ragtag crew on a spaceship and hijinks ensue. Also the author is non-binary so that's cool. I am really looking forward to this. This is what we're going to be reading together. Every month my patrons get to vote on a book that we will read together based on the genre of the month and this is it so looking forward to that. Then every month my patrons are entered into a raffle and the winner gets to select a book they want to see me read and review from my TBR in the coming month. For March the winner was Anda and the book that she picked for me is actually on my audio TBR. It's something that I had downloaded from the Penguin Random House Volumes app and wanted to get to eventually so I'm looking forward to doing it sooner than later. This is The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. It looks really fun. It's kind of a gothic mystery thriller from what I'm getting set at this old hotel in the Swiss Alps and I don't really know anything else. I'm not sure I want to know any more than that but I'm looking forward to it. So thank you Anna for picking that. I'm going to be listening to that audiobook in March. Then we have the three books for other book clubs slash read-alongs that I am participating in. Uh, thankfully the books are all like fun and not terribly long. First up, myself and Ashley over at Bookish Realm are continuing to host the Song of the Lioness Quartet read-along. We're moving on to book two, which is In the Hand of the Goddess by Tamora Pierce. I love this series a whole lot and I'm really enjoying diving back into a reread yet again. So this is a first read for Ashley. In March the live show is going to be over on her channel and if I have the information when this goes up I will link that down below, but I'm going to be reading this. Then if you haven't seen the announcement video yet, I and Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter are launching a indigenous romance read-along starting in March, which I'm excited for. It's going to go for six months and we have romances one each month that we're going to be reading that are by indigenous authors. So the first one is Heartbeat Braves by Pamela Sanderson and this one is an adult contemporary romance. I hear really good things about it. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to be doing a live show and hopefully other people will join in as well. Um, very excited for that. And then lastly, I am now officially part of the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club. It was originally started by my friends Leanna at Leanna's Library and Amanda at The Naughty Librarian, but myself and Mara from Books Like Woe are also joining. And in the month of March, we will be reading The Widow of Rose House by Diana Biller. This is a gothic romance that I am really excited to have a reason to get to. It's set in 1875 in Gilded Age New York with a gothic mansion and I am very much looking forward to it. So lots of book clubs and read-alongs this month but I think they're all going to be really fun. Then I have a book that I am going to be reading in preparation for a podcast episode which is exciting. This is Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett. Maybe I will even vlog this. I have never read a Terry Pratchett book before and I am having Alan from the Library of Alexandria on a future podcast episode where he will be talking all about Terry Pratchett and Discworld and going into that I wanted to have at least read one book by him so I'm going to be reading this early in the month and I am excited. I hope I like it. We'll see. It'll be it'll be interesting. Alan is the person whose video about it convinced me to finally give Terry pa Pratchett a try. So that is going to be happening in March. Then we basically just have a whole bunch of books for review. I've got a few physical ones. I've got some eARCs. We are going to talk about all of it. First up I have a historical romance that looks like a lot of fun. This is The Spinster and the Rake by Eva Devon. This was sent to me by Entangled Publishing and it's being pitched as a blend of My Fair Lady meets Pride and Prejudice. I really like both of those stories. I'm curious to see how it gets blended but it looks like fun so I'm planning on reading that one. 
Then an arc that I got from Penguin Teen of a book that's coming out in April that I'm hoping to get to next month is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. I love the cover on this one and I'm really really curious about it. I have high hopes for it. I hope it's like as good as I want it to be. It's a YA debut that's like creepy mystery thriller meets magical realism about these two sisters who when they're young disappear. Two are sisters? Three sisters? Three sisters. Okay, three sisters who disappeared for a while when they were young reappeared and strange, there's strange things about them. So I'm really looking forward to that. Then a book that I have from an indie author for review who very kindly sent me a physical book and access to an audio copy, so I'm probably going to be doing a blended read for this one, and I've got to say, for a self-published book, I love this cover. This is The Hand That Takes by Taylor O'Connell, book one in the fall of the Coward series. This was pitched to me as grimdark fantasy, a uh, fantasy thriller good for fans of Scott Lynch, Robin Hobb, and Patrick Rothfuss, which is like... Okay, very interesting. I love the cover. I love the vibe. I'm excited to see how it goes. It says it's a magical artifact, a violent crime syndicate, a thief in over his head. Salvatore Lorenzo seeks to make his place in the world, but first he must survive the mean streets of Dijvoy? Dijvoy? <laughs> I'm saying that right. In a city run by gangsters, a life of crime is nothing short of ordinary, especially to a young thief living in Lowtown. Opportunity comes knocking after Sal is tasked with the theft of a magical locket. When the heist of the century goes awry, fingers are pointed in the hunt for a rat within the crew. Once bodies begin to drop, it's left to Sal to find the source before he finds himself the next victim wearing a red smile. Um, so yeah, sounds really interesting. Thank you to Taylor for sending along a copy. I will be reading that one in March. I have, there's another book that I am expecting for March. Uh, so if it arrives in time, I should be reading it. It's called Isoldes. Isoldes. I don't have the information in front of me, but I will put a picture up here. Um, hopefully that comes together. And then the last physical thing I have is a middle grade book that was sent to me from Macmillan Children's. It's nonfiction and it looks great and it's middle grade March, so that seems appropriate. Also, this is Baseball's Leading Lady, Effa Manley and the Rise and Fall of the Negro Leagues by Andrea Williams. So this looks really interesting. It's the biography of a black woman who I guess is the only woman inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. She was an activist. It looks really cool. Um, it's got pictures inside it. It's got large text, so it probably wouldn't take long to read. Um, but I just loved the idea of this as a nonfiction title for a middle grade audience. So I will be reading that as well. And then of course, we have my neck alley arcs. <laughs> Is anyone surprised? All right, what do I have? First up, I have a historical romance with, I think, like a mystery element to it. This is called One Thing Leads to a Lover by Susanna Craig. I read the first book in this series last year and really loved it. And so even though I already had more March arcs than I was supposed to for NetGalley, when I saw it go up, I was like, oh, but I really want to read that. <laughs> So I requested it. So I requested it. Um, yeah, I really liked the first book. I have high hopes for the second one. I also have The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris. This is probably the one I'm most nervous about because it's a super hard hitting. <sighs> Uh, we'll see. We'll see if I can get through it. Um, it's a super hard hitting book with some slight speculative elements to it, dealing with race and police brutality and death. And I hear that it's just like really, really gut wrenching. So hopefully I can like make it through that one. All of these are April releases, by the way. I also have To Love and to Loathe by Martha Waters, which is a historical romantic comedy. Mara from Books Like Woe read this and said it was really fun and she enjoyed it quite a bit, so I'm looking forward to that. Then I have Malice by Heather Walter. This is one that I am highly anticipating, so I hope it's as good as I want it to be. It's a retelling of Sleeping Beauty, but if Sleeping Beauty fell in love with the evil sorceress. <laughs> so it's like a fairy tale retelling with a sapphic romance. I, I'm, I'm very intrigued. Then I have She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quindlin. This is a YA sapphic romance that is an opposites attract or like enemies to lovers thing maybe with a cheerleader and a basketball player. Then for something a little bit darker, we have The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldovsky. This is a YA thriller that's being pitched as Scream meets Karen McManus about a mysterious club with an obsession for horror and I think like teens start dying. So 
that should be interesting. I've also got The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. I thought her first book was really interesting. There were things I liked about it and I'm curious to see how she does with her second book. She's just doing some interesting things talking about sex work and adult performers but through these romances. So I don't know, we'll see. I want to say this one is like a politician falls in love with a porn star. Like I think that's the premise of this very curious to see how it goes. Okay, two more. <laughs> I have What's Not to Love by Emily Wibberly and Austin Siegman Broca. This is a YA contemporary romance romantic comedy. I've read one book by them and I did enjoy it and this one is an enemies to lovers YA I, with like nerdy stuff. Hopefully it's fun. <laughs> like so I'm gonna try that one. And then lastly I have The Earl, A Girl, and a Toddler by Vanessa Riley. This is the second of her traditionally published historical romances. I read the first one and really liked it a lot um, and there also aren't that many black authors writing Regency romances so definitely want to read this and support her. Looking forward to that one. And I think that is it. Like those are the things on my TBR which it, it's kind of a lot. I'll probably read some other things. It's possible I won't get to everything on this list but um, most of it, if not all of it, I do plan to read in March. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, let me know what you're planning on reading in March. Are you planning on participating in middle grade March? Or are you reading mysteries for March? Like I've seen people do both of those things. Let me know in the comments down below what your plans are. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.